Hi, I'm Ryan Nickel, CTO at DSA Ocean, and today we're going to talk about reverse engineering hull information for the purposes of a hydrodynamics calculation. So why would you want to do this? Uh, it depends on the circumstances. You may be working in a CAD program uh, for ship design or hull design that um, uh, doesn't export a lot of different kinds of hull mesh. Um, the STL format is pretty common, but it can be a little bit messy, and uh, it's not really suitable for doing a hydrodynamics analysis for ship motion or mooring design or, or things like that kind of uh, calculations. Um, you may have also uh, data from different sources, um, from a different kind of file, from a 3D scan of a hull or something like that, which may only come in a STL format as well. Um, so we're going to use uh, Rhino 8 for this because there's some new features in it on uh, shrink wrap and that in combination with quad remesh make it really easy to uh, make a nice clean uh, a mesh for hydrodynamics analysis and we're going to show how to bring this into uh, the Shipmo 3D tool set. So uh, what we're going to do is we have a um, hull file of a, of a vessel that's the for the basis of the generic offshore supply vessel. Um, I happen to know that this is in millimeters, so we'll just open the STL file here in Rhino 8. And there's quite a lot of information. It might take a little a moment or two to load, and, and there we go. So um, this is pretty typical for an STL file. I mean, it, it does have a faithful representation of the, of the geometry and curvature and everything of the system, but it's not really suitable for hydrodynamics analysis because the, the, the polygons are very skewed. There's big ones here that are, that are way too long, and um, there's way too much detail here. There's not enough detail through here for the calculation process. You may want to delete a lot of features in the hull to simplify it and streamline the calculation process and, and so on. Um, so uh, I happen to know again this this data is in millimeters. Uh, you can verify that the the ship length's about eighty meters. So you know you can see sort of uh, you know we're about roughly x equals zero here, and you know you get to the end just looking down here. Um, there's about you know eighty thousand you know uh, is the units that is showing up. So um, the first thing we're going to do is um, go to uh, file and then properties. We'll change the units into something that we can use here. It needs to be in meters. That's what the Shimmel 3D tool set is going to understand. So we go to model units to meters, model units to meters, and go OK. Now there's this option that comes up. It says change unit system only. Um, we want to choose the second one change unit system and maintain object sizes. So, you know, one millimeter box becomes a 0.000. Uh, 001 meter box here. So when you do that, um, your model disappears, but not to worry, it's easy to get it back, uh, so to speak, um, using the ZE command zoom extent um, on each of these ren uh, rendering portals here. Uh, uh, just brings the model right back into where you want to uh, be looking at here. There we go. Um, now, uh, we need to do a bunch of cleanup and we need to orient the um, ship correctly for uh, the hydrodynamics calculation process and for sea keeping and maneuvering um, for the Shipmo 3D toolset too. So um, at this point, what I like to do is I'm going to save this as a um, Rhino file, just a working hull file. You may want to um, have a different amount of detail in it um, later and it's easy to work with this and, and we can save the STL file um, for, for working with later. So the first thing we want to do is bring this onto the midline. Um, generally we want to have the baseline along you know the, the plane here and the and the aft perpendicular is kind of close to this origin as, as we can. Um, so the first thing I like to do, I like to make sure I have OSNAP on here with vertex and I'll pick something that's kind of as close to obviously on the midline as possible. So, um, and you may find it easier to temporarily uh, join everything in here just as we're working with this. So I'll hit control A and join everything as one kind of, um, one sort of big object. So it just makes it a little bit easier to handle while we're moving it. Um, so we'll click on this and we'll click and we'll type move. Um, and with uh, the vertex select option here, you know, we get something that's pretty much exactly on the midline here. 
and I'm going to move that to 0, 0, 0. And this is kind of an intermediary step here. Um, so I do want to make some additional adjustments here. Um, the, the aft perpendicular where, you know, the, the rear station is, is, you know, is somewhere around about here. Um, I mean, you know, you can, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it, it makes it easier when you're working in the Shipmo 3D tool set later when you're adding features like bilge keels and things like that and the propeller and the rudder. We don't, we don't keep this geometry. We're going to delete all that in a minute. Um, um, and just make sure you get everything lined up correctly. So, um, and we can use the distance tool to kind of just refine things a little bit here. So, um, what I'm going to do is make a measurement. So, you know, that I want this to aft perpendicular at the origin to be somewhere like around at this, this point, just based on the ship information, uh, that this is based on. Um, so we'll go distance to, to measure, um, just really roughly. Again, we're going to look for something that's on the, the midline here. So, you know, something like around round about here and um, and again we know that our tailing vertex here is at zero 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 so it's just saying you know the delta x is 4.27 so you know we want to shift the whole thing up in x by about 4.27 meters and again you know we we want to figure out what the the delta x is to get the 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 flat bottom of the contain of uh, the offshore uh, supply vessel on the, on the sort of the baseline here so we'll do another distance measurement you just press enter again it'll use the last command and so what we can do is just pick a point along the center line it's pretty flat bottom so there and we'll look at that same vertex this at zero 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 now so it's negative six point three eight so we are now going to move the whole thing and we want to move this little vertex uh, selected all the objects we wanted to what what do we want to move we want to move this little vertex here um, we want to move it up 4.7 sorry 27 <clears throat> don't do anything in y and negatives 6 uh, three eight. Now we just go back there. Six three eight, and the other one was four point two seven. Cool. Here we go. So uh, we still, you can pretty much see it's it's on the midline. That's great. Um, we've got the baseline uh, running along here. Now there's. Um, Bilge keels and a whole bunch of other geometry that we want to clean off here as well and simplify the geometry a little bit. So we're going to do that. Um, we'll save it as we go along here. Now um, we need to uh, uh, explode this. Uh, yes, we'll do that. Um, we joined it all just to make it easier to move things around. And it might take a minute there. Okay, so it's all done. Okay after it's been exploded what we want to do is go through and clean up uh, the geometry now there's a couple commands that can help make this really quick and easy um, I really like working with visibility so you can sort of temporarily hide things it makes it really easy to select um, some geometry uh, that you might want to um, hide here and then we can delete things so here we have bilge keels and some and uh, sacrificial anodes we want to get rid of all of those it's really easy to select those now and just delete them we'll do some more hiding here you can also select the things you want to keep and then invert the selection so let's just give another example of this Selecting some geometry, we'll keep the stuff at the back. And if we go invert, now uh, you can see we missed some of the hull bits here, but uh, we can deselect those. Control 
to unselect those things. I want to keep all this up front here, um, but I don't want to keep the you can bandbox select as well. I uh, we don't want to keep the grill covers. Don't want to keep the ducts and those things. Um, we don't want to keep the propellers uh, or appendages. We're going to include those. Um, as part of the viscous models in the ship motion tool. So shift and uh, hold down control, bandbox, select those ones. So I'll keep that inside here and delete all that. Um, now we'll just click the light bulb here on visibility. So my, my main point, it might take a bit of playing with it. Um, um, it's okay to have holes in um, in the mesh, the holes are going to get filled by um, the uh, quad remesh process. And you can see we got hole, we're not going to model the effect of the um, holes in the hull from the bow thrusters. Um, we want that to be covered by the um, shrink wrap function. So we're actually ready for that now. Um, you may even want to make save an intermediary copy um, of this. Simplified. Um, just be aware of the file that you're working on. So I'm going to, for simplicity, I'm just going to keep working on this file. Um, so we want to join the whole thing. I'm, I'm done cleaning this up. So we're going to select all join. And now we want to go to the mesh tools function here and we want to look for shrink wrap here. Um, we do want to preview. Um, so what shrink wrap is doing is um, covering all of this geometry with a new mesh. <clears throat> and this is not the mesh that we're going to use. That's that's going to be um, the computational mesh. It's an intermediary mesh. But it, what this allows us to do is cover the holes um, and make sure that we faithfully kind of represent the geometry. And, and it's an intermediary step at getting a nice ordered mesh. Um, so this is, um, I would say, not... Uh, not fine enough, so we'll go to um, 0 0.05. Um, and when you um, you can hide the input object and kind of get a sense of what what's going on. Um, it's a little a tiny bit rough around here where it's trying to fill those giant holes from the the bow thrusters, but otherwise not looking too bad. And then when when you uncheck hide input objects, you can kind of see how much overlap there is. Like it's pretty tight around the existing geometry which is fantastic and you know it's filled in the hole here in the back which is great um, and so we are going to also select delete input objects so we don't want to keep the old STL geometry in there and we'll go um, okay with that now um, what we want to do is um, go through uh, uh, use the quad remesh to clean this up even further um, and you could just apply it to the whole the whole system uh, here. And what what you're going to find like this, what the problem is here is there's just really really fine detail through here and where all the seams are, and that's um, there's just way too much detail in those areas for the purposes of a, a hydrodynamics analysis. So the first thing and the simplest thing to do is you can go straight to quad remesh, and you can just type quad remesh there. Um, I like to, you can use edge length um, or target quad count, that's sort of like the number of panels in, in the entire mesh. And remember that's going to get cut in half when we when we do cut the mesh in half and we'll look at that in a minute. Um, I like target quad count a little bit better because I kind of get a better sense of like how many panels um, are, are in the whole thing and the adaptive size I feel sort of does a better job at handling corners and transitions and things like that. So we want to pick symmetric axis X. Um, we do want to preview it. And it will take a bit of time to go through that. Um, you may want to hide input 
the input objects and just get a feel for that. That's that's a little bit coarse. Um, there's sort of some uh, a little bit of distortion here and that sort of thing that you may not be totally happy with. Um, and, you know, there's enough complicated geometry in the front. I'd sort of be happier having a bit more um, a bit more detail in it. So maybe we might do 5,000. Um, and again, you can uh, look at the mesh as is. Uh, that looks that looks quite a lot better. We're not getting as much distortion. You can see the adaptive meshing sort of helps contour things along the top a little bit easier. Um, that looks a lot better. Um, if you uncheck hide input objects, you can see how close, just by looking at sort of the overlap of the mesh, how close things are um, to the original one. Um, and definitely it's a, you know, a little bit of an art in sort of picking out what works. Um, but yeah, we'll hide input objects, delete. And go OK, and um, and then we'll uh, we'll save this. Um, now the um, the the final step that you will need to do is to cut the mesh in half um, overall. Uh, that's that should be the last thing that you do, just because any little round off errors you know you get from moving and remeshing and stuff like that might make it a bit finicky to import. And this is pretty straightforward to do. Um, I, I like to pick the side view for this. And what we do is just make a box that uh, encompasses the whole thing. And we'll go enter like that. And we'll go to Mesh Tools and Mesh Trim. And it'll say select. Uh, we already had sort of that polygon selected by creating it. And so we just select the object to trim. And it's got our half mesh there. So I'll. Uh, delete the cutting plane, and we're basically ready to import this into a Shipmo 3D toolset project now. Um, so what we'll do is, again, we may want to save that, and then save as the OBJ format, which is the format that uh, the Shipmo 3D, oop, not GHS, OBJ, there. Um, we may want to say hull uh, medium resolution or whatever you want to call it just to give it give it um, something uh, memorable for what you were working on uh, really want to make sure you have this unchecked map rhino z to obj y uh, we, we want to keep the reference frame interpreted just like this when for importing into the shipmo 3d tool set so go okay and save that uh, it, it's giving the same options again you don't you shouldn't need to change anything else now, we can make a brand new Shipmo 3D toolset project to import this hull file. So we'll go new project. And I'm not going to worry about the particulars of the ship right now. But we'll go add new data, panel hull. We want to select wavefront OBJ format and then Let's make sure we got hull medium resolution file there. And if we go run plot panel hull, you can see there's our hull. Um, I like the ship parts view. Oh, uh, right. I didn't set the displacement. Um, that's under the uh, draft uh, of the baseline at midships. Oh, something like 4.2 might be good. I'll run that again. And plot panel hull. Uh, there's the wet hull in yellow, and there's a little bit of adaptive meshing there um, along the waterline automatically. And you'll see also um, where it's mirrored it along the midline as well, um, just to kind of help um, with that process. And and it's good to go for the rest of the hydrodynamics process. So this was reverse engineering um, uh, STL file uh, hull data um, using Rhino 8 and shrink wrap and quad remesh for preparation for hydrodynamics anal analysis, sea keeping and maneuvering in the Shipmo 3D tool set in Proteus DS. Thanks for watching.